So great, I was looking for you because I haven't, you were out of town, I didn't get any feedback this week. I need it, I need the feedback. Whoa, that would mean we would have rehabilitated the word feedback. Part, part of what I'm doing, I'm now <coughs> down in your file drawer again, and I've already said I thought, I think you have certain associations with the word assessment that might color the way you think about it. I think you have the same thing with the word feedback. You just proved it. Let's think about what, what it would be, how could we rehabilitate the word feedback so it became one of your favorite words, where you're actually seeking it out? <coughs> well, let's plan backwards. What is exemplary feedback? What's the kind of feedback where I would seek it and want it and love it? How would you finish this sentence? To be exemplary, it must be what? Useful. Useful. Keep going. Constructive. Constructive. Pardon me? Specific. Specific. Genuine. Genuine. Comfort. Comforting. Yeah. Comforting. Yeah. Comforting. Supportive. Supportive. Here's the thing. Most of, I don't disagree with any of these, but I, there are hardly any of these words that you should need. You shouldn't have to say any of those things. Here's, here's, what, I, here's what I would say is a, an old way, which is to say the, our current way <laughs> of looking at feedback. If we say things, well, it should be honest. Why wouldn't it be honest? <coughs> because we're, not, we're, trying, we're trying not to hurt somebody's feelings. We think it's about feelings. It should be tactful. Why wouldn't it be tactful? Same thing. Is we're, we're dancing around a pin here going, going um, oh, well, I, you know, why isn't it more straightforward? Why do we have to say exemplary feedback is useful? Why isn't useful built into the word feedback? In other words, it's not even feedback if it's not useful. I think these words come to our minds because so often <coughs> feedback has not been these things. And also, so, we're all humans. We have very human We do. We're all humans. Thank <laughs> you. We're, thank even you. the most tactful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm last, Diane. How do you get better? Help. I, I think Diane. <laughs> I just said speak for yourself. <laughs> you, you get I'm, better at hearing it when it's. I'm not sure I would call that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> you get you get what? You get better at hearing feedback when you have people who deliver. Feedback to you in a useful, honest, tactful. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even like these words. I'm going to get better, give you better words. Okay. Right. But your point is exactly right. You get better at it by practicing it in a system of a positive feedback system. Not, not the ones we have now. Well, I would say part of it is that if you ask for it, you know, I hate getting unasked for advice. If I ask for advice, right. then it's not so painful. That's right. And this is why we, I feel like, um, like, we are too loose with the word feedback. In other words, if somebody comes and gives us unasked for advice, we sort of roughly call it feedback. That's not feedback, right? That's somebody's unasked for advice. And we, we tend to hear from our best uh, allies and our worst critics, and we think that we're getting feedback. Well, mo the people we really need to hear from is the, are the big middle, and particularly the people who are affected by our work. Oh, but we don't see them, or we don't bump into them, or something. Well, this is that, that's why, because we're not planning backwards from getting the information we need. We're sort of accepting the information that comes our way, as and calling it feedback. <clears throat> Let me tell you the words that I would recommend to you, <clears throat> which is to say, please open a file drawer now, <laughs> because here comes. I'd like you to think about feedback in this way: that um, exemplary feedback is contextual. Now, here comes the most obvious statement of the day. You can't have contextual feedback unless you have a context. The context for feedback is what are you trying to do? So the difference in hearing from somebody who knows what it is you're trying to do versus somebody who has no idea what you're trying to do is the difference between night and day. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that we need to create feedback systems. And believe me, the coach and the athlete are in a feedback system. Right because they both know exactly what the athlete is trying to do, right? They both know that. So the coach's feedback is entirely contextual. It has to do with exemplary performance and whatever's, or whatever's going on. <coughs> exemplary feedback is descriptive. 
as opposed to judgmental. Now, how much easier would it be to give descriptive feedback if we had taken the time together to build a context with descriptive language in it? So when I say, well, Matt, here's what I noticed, et cetera, he's going, uh-huh, 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 oh, okay. You know, let's just take something really simple. Let's say that, um, you know, here I am. I'm um, uh, doing my thing right now. I'm performing as a workshop leader right now. And let's say that I had told Matt, um, one of the things I've been thinking about is that I don't do enough is make eye contact with the people in the room. I think that's a good idea. I should do it. So if Matt look, whispers to me, he goes, I can do That's feedback. If he goes, <laughs> if he goes, you're forgetting. You're looking at the screen or you're looking at your notes. That's feedback. It's descriptive. It's contextual. It's helpful right away. I'm not going, I'm not going, stop picking on me or who's, who asked you? I asked him because we're in a system where he's trying to make me better. Timely. Exemplary feedback comes in time to use it. <laughs> it's amazing how long we put up with performance from ourselves, our colleagues, our allies, etc., that's falling a little bit short, and we haven't found a way to give feedback because we think it's going to be misunderstood. We think it's going to be like, you know, who, who am I to do this? Well, in the absence of a feedback system, you're right. You, you feel like you're overstepping your bounds. But the great <coughs> leaders of, in the social sector, the great leaders, staff and board, make feedback <coughs> like breathing in and breathing out. And it's not about personalities, and it's not about failure. It's about what are we trying to do together. <coughs> um, are, you, are you with me on feedback? The, um, I, I need to just tell you a story that I, I just love this, this idea of, of, of useful when feedback isn't useful. <laughs> um, and this is a story, it's set in a school, it's set actually graduation. So I'm an English teacher, right? And uh, Greg was one of my students. And um, Greg is uh, walking past, he's holding his, um, you know, whatever you call that, hat. What do you call that? Mortarboard. Mortarboard. He's holding his mortarboard. He's holding his uh, diploma. And I go, uh, Greg, congratulations. He goes, oh, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Grant. Oh, say, uh, by the way, I've been meaning, Mr. Grant, I, I'm glad I bumped into you. I've been meaning to ask you about this word you kept writing in the margins of my essays. Oh, what, are you, what are you talking about, Greg? Vagu, like the last five essays you wrote Vagu in the <laughs> No, vague, the word's vague. Now, this is where it's really, it's helpful to be an English teacher with a sense of irony because <laughs> it might as well have been Vagu. <laughs> picture, picture, uh, a lot of, some, I'm sure a number of you have taught at some point in your life, and you know you'll be familiar with this scene. It's midnight, you just want to go to bed, you're tired, you've got this stack of papers, and you go, I'm going to do one more. I just, I can't, I'm going to do one more. Oh, it's Greg's. Well, let me, uh, I, hope this, I hope this essay is clearer than the last one. It should be, I helped him, I gave him some feedback. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, let me help him again. <laughs> Vagu. So, so, now, what if we had been in a feedback system where we'd been clear about criteria, and in this case, criteria for persuasive writing, let's say, uh, one of the criteria for success is clarity. How would I know it if I saw it? How would I know it when I don't see it? And I describe a context of work going from poor to fair to good to excellent. And somewhere down on the poor end, of this spectrum, I use the word vague. And if he had, didn't know it before, he knows it now. And he hears it. He, know, he hears it's pronounced vague. And so then when I write vague, he, hears, he sees vague and he says, oh, okay, this is about clarity, right? Neither one of us is suddenly a smarter person, but we're in an assessment system that is actually working, that would work uh, for him. Now, <clears throat> so, uh, there, there are three little mental shifts that I'm urging uh, today, and the, the first one, I, I, uh, that, whole, that whole sort of everything we've done up to now has been about this shift. 
And it's been about a shift from a focus on summative assessment, almost an assumption that assessment is by nature summative, to the practice of formative assessment. You can't practice formative assessment unless you know what it is, unless you can imagine it working, unless you have some examples of it in your head. Um, so um, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, we're going to take that shift and we're going to, we're going to say, okay, I'm going to assume you're going, hmm, okay, I'll consider that shift. I don't think it's going to do uh, as good, as much good as it could do you unless you make two other mental shifts along with it. Okay? So I'd like to uh, go back to your file drawer and ask you, what's in your file drawer on measurement? Because a lot of people, when they think of assessment, and they even go, okay, I'll get formative assessment. Um, tell, me, um, tell me what I'm supposed to measure. Then I'm going to ask you, well, what do you think measurement is? What are your assumptions about measurement? Well, you tell me. Hmm? Sort of standard. That there are standard measures, indeed. <laughs> there are indeed standard measures, and that's why people say that some measures have validity and reliability, right? What else? What else do you think of with just the word measurement? As you check down and you say, well, what is measurement anyway? Numerical. Numerical. Yeah. Bingo. How many people? Bingo. Don't underestimate how almost unconsciously we assume that if you're actually measuring something, you come up with a number. Mm. How many of you just sort of assume that you feel, you recognize that as an assumption? Well, this is very limiting to us if we're planning backwards from anything that's not easily quantifiable. And I'm just guessing the things that matter most to you are not easily quantifiable. Some of them are. Some of them are. Numbers.